Now let's do a problem in simple viscosity. So simple viscosity is that the force equals minus BV, where this is the coefficient of viscosity. So the faster it moves, the faster the resistive force. So this is the resistive force right here. Okay. We can imagine a speedboat. So we have a speedboat, and the boat is on the water and has an engine here. And let's say that the coefficient of resist, uh, the coefficient of viscosity between the boat and the water is 64.5 kilograms per second. Now, this coefficient depends on several factors. The coefficient depends on the shape of the boat, depends on the, the nature of the interaction between the, the surface of the boat and the water, whether it's smooth or rough. It also depends on the nature of the water, whether you have salt water or fresh water or what. So this, this, is, this is an experimentally determined sort of factor right there. Let's say the mass of the boat is 345 kilograms. So it's, it's like a fiberglass boat with a big engine on it. And so what I want to know is that if the engine, so the engine is capable of a maximum of 285 newtons of force. So in that case, what is the top speed of this speedboat? Okay, well, free body diagram, we got mg, we got the buoyancy force, we got the engine force, and we've got the resistive force. So the buoyancy is balanced by the weight, and so the engine force has to balance the resistive force. So that means that uh, uh, the resistive force, BV, is going to be balanced about against the force of the engine. Now, remember there was a minus sign in there. Minus sign, you know, we had force the engine this way. This is BV this way, so that's why it was minus BV is the resistive force. So it's in the opposite direction. And so that's, but I move it to the other side of the equation. So I just say the magnitude of this has to balance the magnitude of that. So the, uh, uh, now, the, the speed is going to end up being the force of the engines, the, it'd be the, 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 the thrust of the engine. So the force of the engines divided by the um, coefficient. And so uh, in this case, you know, the engine can be whatever, but if we assume it's at maximum, uh, 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 maximum uh, output, 285 newtons divided by 64.5 kilograms per second. And so that comes out to be 4.42 meters per second, which is pretty quick. I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty decent, decent clip. So, uh, so that's the speed of the boat uh, um, at maximum. Well, let's not just leave it with that. Let's say this boat is now going to the water at not maximum speed, but let's say it's going at four meters per second, close to maximum speed. And so now the boat, uh, uh, the boat uh, uh, operator decides to cut the engines and the boat, boat coasts. I want to know if the initial velocity is four meters per second, how long until it's moving at half velocity? So I want to know what time makes it move at half speed. Okay. Well, normally what you would do is V equals V naught plus AT, and you'd find the force, except, wait, wait, the force is not, you know, the, the acceleration is F over M, but F is minus BV, but that's a variable. That means when it starts slowing down, when it starts slowing down, the force drops. So this equation will not hold. That equation is only valid for constant acceleration. So we cannot use that equation to find the velocity of the boat. We can also not use the x equation. X naught, uh, uh, you know, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. This is not valid for this, this particular problem because the acceleration is not constant. 
So we got to work this entirely differently. So we know that MA, that's the resistance, that's, that's, that's what's happening here, that this is the resistive force. There's no th engine thrust, so that is providing the mass times acceleration. And so we look at that and say, well, acceleration equals minus B over M times V. Now, acceleration is dV dt equals B over MV. Okay. And so you say, well, gosh, I need to solve this equation. Well, this is a differential equation. So how do you solve a differential equation? Well, a lot of you all are going to take a whole course in solving differential equations. Um, and when you take that course, uh, when I took that course, I just struggled for about halfway through the class because the professors were making it sound like there's this really uh, exquisite method of solving differential equations. And I kept looking at it and I wasn't getting it. And finally, halfway through the semester, I said, oh, it's lucky guessing. And I mentioned that to one of our math professors here. And they said, oh, no, no, it's not lucky guessing. And I said, well, how do you really solve them? And he said, well, first of all, you postulate an appropriate solution. And I said, isn't that like guessing? And he got irritated. Anyway, so what we do is we ignore the coefficient. And you say, what do you know if you take a derivative, you get the same thing you started with? Well, that's an exponential function. How about negative? Well, that would be a, a e to the minus something. So if v equals e to the minus b over m t, you get something like that. Well, it turns out if you multiply by v naught, you still get something like that. Uh, because uh, dv dt, in this case, would be minus b over m v naught e to the minus b over m t. In other words, dv dt would be minus b over m times v. You know, and so it's like, okay, so that's, 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 that solves this equation. Okay, now, what you learn in math is that when you come up with a solution like this, that it is what they call sufficient and complete, meaning it is the only solution you need and the only solution that, that, that works for that equation. Okay, so now we have a solution to the equation. So V equals V and all e to the minus B over MT. So I want to know how long until the velocity was 2 meters per second if the initial velocity is 4 meters per second e to the minus b over m t. Okay, so 0.5 equals e to the minus b over m t. The natural log of 0.5 equals minus b over m t. So t equals in, minus m natural log of 0.5 over b. So that's going to be minus 345 kilograms times natural log of 0.5 divided by 64.5 uh, uh, kilograms per second. Okay, so T comes out to be equal to 3.71 seconds. So it takes 3.71 seconds to cut the velocity in half. So the next question is how long until the velocity is one meter per second? Well, if V equals V naught E to the minus B over MT, if that's two and that's one, then, then it's still 0.5 equals E. Well, it's the same equation as before, so that means T is still going to be 3.71 seconds. So what we just found was the time for the velocity to drop in half. So in other words, if the velocity goes to one half V naught, that takes 3.71 seconds. So if I want to go from four meters per second to one meter per second, I got to go four meters per second to two meters per second. That's going to be 3.71 seconds. And then to one meter per second, it's another 3.71 seconds. So that would be twice 3.71. So that would be 7.42 seconds. How long until it is point, how long until it is 0.5 meters per second? That would be another 3.71. So that would be 3.71 plus 
7.42, so that would be 11.13 seconds total. Okay, to get to 0.25 meters per second, it'd be another 3.71 seconds. So in other words, the velocity is halved every 3.71 seconds. Well, that's how viscosity works. That's how viscosity slows things down. And so it doesn't matter what speed you're going, it takes a certain amount of time to go half that speed. And then twice that amount of time to go one-fourth the speed. And then three times that amount of time to go one-eighth the speed.